Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with Dr. Calvin Mackey. He's going to speak to us today about, you know, his program that he have and definitely the importance of STEM. Um, and you need to hear his presentation on that because a lot of our children and young adults are being left behind in that very, very important field. So, uh, Dr. Mackey, thank you for joining the show today. Hey, Philip, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, 13 years, not 13 years ago, but in 2013, my wife and I started an organization by the name of STEM NOLA uh, to expose and inspire and engage communities in STEM. Uh, we took 100,000 of our own dollars and started this program in New Orleans because we had two sons at, at that time. And my young son came home one day and he said he didn't like science anymore. I said, boy, that's, that's in your DNA, that's not possible. So when I saw my own son wasn't getting a science, technology, engineering and mathematics presented in a way that he can digest it and grow from it, I found the need uh, to be filled in our community. Well, you mentioned, you know, what STEM means, but you mentioned mathematics. And, you know, mathematics is something that, un unfortunately, some of us just don't like, right? But could you, could you speak more on, on that, the mathematics side? Uh, because there are scholarships that just full ride scholarships and literally just sit there every year to go to college if someone would major in math. You know, uh, I'm an engineer by, by trade, but my first degree is in mathematics. I got a BS in mathematics from Morehouse, and I got a BS, MS, and PhD in mechanical engineering from Georgia Tech. But it was the mathematics that gave me the foundation to do everything that I'm doing. And the funny thing about mathematics, right, many of us are afraid of it because of, because of the way it was presented to us. And that's why we started STEM NOLA, which is a part of STEM Global Action, because we want to make sure that all of our children in the community I introduce math in a way that they can see that it's fun, that it's the video games they play. They're learning math when they're watching football. I mean, right now there's something called pre predictive analytics. They don't understand when they're liking on, on TikTok or they're liking on Facebook, they're liking on Instagram. That's data. That's math. They, you know, those things, are, data is being collected. And then people learn from that data to predict how you're going to behave. So mathematics and data is 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 in everything that we do. So if the future is data, that means the future is mathematics. And that means our children should be uh, prepared with a foundation in math so that they can participate in the 21st century. So Philip, what I'm trying to say is just, it is the way that we present math in our community and in our schools that turn our kids away. When we present math in a way that they can understand it and see that it's part and parcel of who they are, math becomes alive for them. So, you know, when you talked about that portion of it for sure, uh, when it comes to the math, because like you say, when you, when you go back to science, it's math, technology, math, uh, engineering, math, like math. Music, music is math. Music you too. Know, yes, you're right. Oh. Like really in the music and music at its core, music is mathematics. Anybody ever played in a band? They're talking about the four count, the eight count. Mm -hmm. We do a whole thing on, on the physics of sound. I mean, sound is nothing but mathematics at its core. So if our kids can learn music, if our can learn, kids can learn these complicated dances, hell, if our kids can learn these uh, mumbling raps, right? That's nothing but rhythm, music, and mathematics. That's why even if you play piano, um, is they always want you to learn some classical as well because you play a lot of 16 notes and 30-second notes and things like that. You know, and like you said, it's all math because you got to know how to, count, like you said, certain rhythms, certain ways you need to play. So yeah, math is, is very, very important. And they want to take that, you know, away from us and, and shy us, like you said, away from it. Um, but so you mentioned the way they present it to us. How do they present the mathematics in a way that people say, I don't want to learn that. How, how do they present it? So I'll give you an example. So what we do with kids, 
is that we present physics, engineering, in a way such that they understand the phenomenon, right? The way they present the, the math and the physics to us is that they do it through, through equations. As soon as we see these equations and we don't understand what they are, it's an immediate turnoff. But if I can teach you engineering with, with, with no equation, I can teach you physics with no equation, such that when you look at you know, this car going across the bridge, you can explain exactly how that happened. If you can explain Newton's three laws, right? Uh, when you then get the equation, it makes sense to you. My son now is a freshman at Howard University in mechanical engineering. When he was eight years old, we had him on the news explaining how windmill worked. And he talked about this as wind energy hitting the blade, being converted to mechanical energy that turns this, that converts to electrical energy that, you know, that, that sends power to the house. And as a proud father, I was proud, but I understood then that this boy is going to be all right because he has, he has an understanding of it, right? It's like when our kids play football and, you know, they don't know all these complicated plays that the pros are calling, but we expose them in such a way that once they go to junior and they go to high school, all of that begin to make sense. That is what we do at STEM Global Action in terms of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, such that they make it digestible for all our children. So in, in, in your, you know, you say STEM NOLA that you have, um, is, this, is it, you know, something that parents are just signing kids up uh, in it to get the mentorship or how does the program itself work? So uh, STEM NOLA is, is the organization we founded relative to New Orleans. So what we're doing now, Philip, we're in the process of licensing this model around the country. I'm actually talking to people in Houston right now about starting STEM Houston. We have STEM Baton Rouge. We have STEM Grambling backed by Sodexo Magic and Magic Johnson. We have STEM Illinois with the University of Illinois. So, I, you know, so all of those affiliates fall under this umbrella called STEM Global Action. So our program is open nationally. Parents can go to www.stemnola.com or www.stemglobalaction.com to find out if there's an activity close to them that they can participate in person. Uh, they can participate in a lot of our virtual programs where we mail the kid the kit and then we engage them over Zoom and it's hands-on activities, right? We put over $1.5 million in the hands of college students over the last seven years because we hired the college students and then on Saturday, your son or your daughter can get online and do STEM, whether it's programming a robot or whether it's making chemistry or dissecting a sheep heart with, with college students who otherwise uh, notice stuff like the back of their hand. Yeah, and, and I want to ask you a question also, you know, about, you know, Black Americans and STEM here in America and and how a lot of us are just missing out even on uh, high paying careers. Like, what what is the, the numbers? I know you, you're a numbers guy. Well, what is the numbers with Black Americans in, in STEM, like uh, in the United States? Because I know it's not very high. Oh, the number is not very high. When I got my PhD in mechanical engineering in 1996, I was one of 11 African-Americans that year to get a PhD in mechanical engineering. So when you look at the number of engineers in the United States of America, Black Americans make up about 4% uh, or less of engineers graduating every year. We're, we're somewhere in the 2 3% range. So the numbers are very low. Even when you start looking at computer science, any STEM area, the numbers are very low. And that's why one of my life's mission is to expose more of our kids to STEM so they, so that they can know that this is a career choice. One, one, you know, one thing I often point out, especially African American boys, I say there's 2,750 billionaires in America. There's 2,500 players in the in NFL. In the history of the NFL, not one of those players has ever made it on that billionaire list. So, but when you look on that billionaire list, the first 50 almost are all STEM people. The richest black man in America, Robert Smith, the second richest black man. Uh, I forget his name now, the St. Louis, both of those guys are technology people. Uh, when you can start off with an, a thought, an idea, and create something, you can create an economy for yourself. So imagine if our kids were getting up every day thinking about what they can create and sell so that they can create the economies we need in our communities rather than going out to entertain people and hopefully get rich. Yeah, and, and, and parents that are watching, the reason why this is important and you got to enforce this you know, on, on children because you're not gonna always be here and they need a way to, to provide for themselves. You know, STEM is something that they can have live a good life or create, you know, definitely be an entrepreneur. Uh, and we need more people in our community that they can do the, this in these fields. So, 
you know, get your kids in programs like this. You know, they they can go play iPad and and watch Netflix and whatever else later. Let's dedicate some of our time because we can't have all our kids being dumbed down. We just can't do it because there's a lot of that falls back on us as parents. It falls back on us at the first century. Our children are gonna have one of three options. Either they're gonna take something, break something, and or make something. So if we don't give them the education, the skills, the inspiration, and the motivation to make something, like make a living, make a life, make a difference, they're only gonna leave them with the two options that we see on the news every night. I didn't want that for my two sons. And uh, I hope most people, or all people, don't want that for their children. So like Philip saying, find a STEM program close to you, find a coding camp, find a robotics camp, find a science camp, and let's get our kids on a path uh, where they can create the future uh, let alone just uh, live in it. Right. And, and you mentioned your sons. So sometimes, you know, you hear that, oh, well, black boys don't really want to learn math like that and science like that. But you had your sons. You know, what maybe you could share with the audience that maybe got sons, even daughters, don't matter. What, what tactics did you employ to get your sons to say, hey, man, I, I love this? Hey, the bottom line is this if you ask a kid, do you want to watch TV? Or, or, or read. They're going to say, I want to watch TV. If you ask a kid, do you want ice cream or broccoli? They're going to say, I want ice cream. If you ask a kid, you want, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, a salad or pizza? They're going to say, I want I want pizza. So you mold clay. Clay doesn't decide what it becomes. You mold clay. But even if you don't mold the clay, STEM teaches us that the clay still going to take its own shape. What we see with a lot of young people is that we see clay that no one has decided to put their hands on. So I start molding my kids from the beginning. This wasn't an op this wasn't an option, right? This is what we do. And since we started from the beginning, we didn't have those battles on the back end. Once my son got to the ninth grade, my second son, he said, well, daddy, I don't think I want to be an engineer. I said, well, that's beautiful, son, because we've given you the foundation to be whatever you want to be, even if it's an engineer. And that's what we have to do with all our children. We have to be intentional. We have to be consistent, just like we're doing sports. I meet parents all the time. And they'll spend five thousand dollars over the summer on travel volleyball, something you mm -hmm. can't go pro in or, or travel this. But then yep. you say put them in a coding camp for three hundred and fifty dollars. They say I don't have the money, or they say they're not interested. No, they're not interested because you have not exposed them, and you have not exposed them because you haven't done what you're supposed to do as a parent and tell them this is what you're going to do. I mean, a lot of parents and they, they say my my daughter's sixteen, my son's sixteen, they're not interested in anything. I said, if your son's 16 or your daughter's 16 are not interested in anything, that's a reflection on what you did not do when they were six years old. Yes, sir. And that, and that is the God's honest truth. I, I, see, I love that. That's the, basically what you're saying is accountability. Yes. And, and, and unfortunately, and, and unfortunately, you know, in, in this country, but also in our community, accountability is something that people don't, ooh, that's a scary word for them. They that's get right. angry when you tell them, hey, you know, your kid is in this position because you did not do what you were supposed to do. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So when you have, like you said, when you have a child that's six, seven, eight years old, that's easier time to get them in something because you we both know when they get teenagers, if you mm -hmm. haven't done it by now, oh that, that's it. Man, you know, because nothing that, you say is right. You don't know, you don't know nothing. <laughs> like you said, they, they know everything. I got I got two of them. I got with a 16, 18, or 17, 18 year old now. Mm -hmm. And I find my son, like I told my son, I said, look, son, I didn't get 50 by skipping over 18, right? I didn't, I didn't get 50 by skipping over 25. I've been there, done that, saw that. Now, either, you know, you can learn from my mistakes or you can just go and bump your head for you because you think you know it all. But we got to get our community and we got to get our families and we got to get our kids engaged in STEM as early as possible. Matter of fact, for our programming that's uh, in person in New Orleans, we actually have a, uh, a early childhood corner. So kids, parents can bring kids as early as six months. We teach parents from six months to pre-K four what to do with their kids at home to help develop critical thinking skills. And then from pre-K four all the way up to the 12th grade, we engage them with hands-on activities. Okay, and you and you did mention that you are you know possibly going to be opening um, you know one here in Houston. You mentioned 
Uh, yes, uh, we're talking, we've had a couple of conversations with people about how do we start, you know, STEM Greater Houston. I've actually had an event there uh, a couple of months ago with the uh, Align Group. The Align Group sponsored a virtual STEM day uh, where we had over 200 kids in Houston. Uh, got kids shipped to them and then we engaged them online. But we are really looking to come there and partner with uh, NASA, J Johnson Center, the Align Group and others to have big STEM events in Houston. Okay, and have um, have any of uh, the uh, you know black ran schools have they ever reached out to you? The ones here in Houston, or possibly want to you know do something for those kids? Yeah, I know some of the schools have reached out. I, I can't call them right offhand. I mean, my, the new president of, of Texas Southern, Dr. Alicia Crumpton Young, is a personal friend of mine. We got our PhDs together, and the first week when she became president of TSU, she said, "Look, I got to get that program." here in Houston, you know, in this community. So we, we're going to get there and when we get there, we got people calling from Houston all the time saying, you know, cause I call Houston, New Orleans West. So the, we have a lot of people that are saying, when are you going to bring this to Houston? So we're looking for the right people in Houston because we don't want to be in Houston, right? We want to find the right people in Houston. We want to train them up and give them the model and support them. So this can be something organic and continue to grow uh, so that the community can own it. All right, well, brothers and sisters, you definitely heard our brother, uh, Dr. Mackey here. He said he's looking for people in Houston that can possibly, you know, help, you know, create, you know, this here in Houston. Now, you know, we put our calls before and people definitely have responded and appreciate those who have responded to those calls. Um, so, you know, Dr. Mackey, for people that may be here in Houston, they want to respond to that call and they're responsible and they, you know, they're very thorough because, you know, you're going to check them out. Uh, how can people, you know, get in contact with you? Uh, just go to stemglobalaction.com and then I believe there's a link say join our team or become an affiliate, but just send an email. Even you can send an email to info at stemnola.com and we'll, def we'll definitely respond. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure we're in that pinned comment below down there that you will see. Uh, we'll have the website and, and we'll, you know, have the email. Like I said, parents, you know, get in contact. Uh, with Dr. Mackey here, because like I said, these kids, you know, they're not going to learn nothing watching Squid Game all day. I know it's, I know it's interesting watching that, but um, <laughs> you got to get them some, some STEM in their in the life. You know, definitely, like I said, science and technology, engineering, mathematics. But my big thing is the mathematics. Without mathematics, you're not going to have the rest of it. And that's one that's thing right. that I kids that you don't want to turn away from. Go ahead, brother. Hey, mathematics is like, mathematics is a language, right? Just like your kids speak English. Uh, speak Spanish. We have to make sure that they can speak math. And when they can speak math, it, it it becomes transformative in their life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So make sure, you know, you go to, you know, those website and, and email, uh, you know, Dr. Mackey. I'm pretty sure he'll greatly appreciate it. So, you know, brother, you take care of yourself, you know, and, and God bless your family. Thank you. And when we jump off in Houston, you're going to be the first one to know. Thank you for having me. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.